What's going on guys? So this video is for all my business owners, all my entrepreneurs. And I did record uh, a previous video where I was breaking down, you know, how to buy a vehicle in your company's name, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is break down why you should never, if you own a business and you're a full-time entrepreneur, okay, uh, and, or a full-time business owner, why you should never ever buy a car in your personal name, right? Now, number one, if you're an entrepreneur and your credit isn't where it needs to be, there's three things you need to do. Number one, sounds obvious, you wanna get the negative items removed from your credit. Number two, you wanna start establishing credibility and putting yourself in position to start showing that you can be trusted with credit. Then number three, what you wanna do is start going out and applying for credit cards and or getting um, lines of credit, primary trade lines. Now. In that order. Now, once you started to do that process, if you're a full-time business owner, I don't want to really make it about income, but because you know, if you're if you're a business owner and this is your full-time deal, you're making six figures, seven figures, it makes and you're trying to buy a home too. It makes no sense to buy a vehicle in your personal name. And I'm gonna give you the reason why. Number one reason why, as a business owner, you don't want to buy a vehicle in your own personal name is DTI. Now you may be wondering, well, what is DTI? It stands for debt to income ratio. So essentially what you wanna make sure you can do is if you buy a vehicle in your company's name, right, using your company tax ID number and your EIN number, and it's in the company's name, you may have to do something called PG, and what PG means is personally guarantee the loan depend upon how much, but once it's, once it's in the business's name, that does not affect your personal debt to income ratio, right? So that's the number one reason. Now, number two, if you're attempting to, from a tax perspective, it really doesn't matter, but the second reason why is if you're looking to purchase real estate. Now, this goes without saying, but as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, they put you through the ringer. Now, there is a huge difference between revenue and profit. Revenue is just the amount of money that your company generated. Profit is how much money you made after expenses. Now, I know you, I know you guys out there, you're trying not to show no money to Uncle Sam because you don't wanna pay tax. However, when you start getting into working capital loans and business loans, you're gonna have to pay tax, right? You just are. All that to say, it makes way more sense if you do need to get a vehicle in your vehicle now, do it through your company's name, leveraging your EIN and following the process that I broke down in that video about how to buy a car in your company's name because it's not gonna affect your DTI. So when you do start the mortgage application process, they're gonna wanna see two years of tax returns and depend upon your business entity, and I broke down another video when I was breaking this down about business entities and taxes, whether you're an S corporation, C corporation, LLC, makes no difference. At the end of the day, they wanna see how much did you pay tax on? And that's what they're gonna base the amount of mortgage you get approved for. For example, if your business made $250,000 in revenue, but you had $100,000 in profit, they're gonna, your adjusted gross income after you file your 1040 is gonna be based off the profit number potentially that you show, and that's gonna be how much you get approved for the mortgage. So that's the second reason why, right? You don't wanna affect your DTI, and you don't want that DTI preventing how much mortgage you qualify for, because again, when you start getting to the mortgage game or the mortgage lending game, they're gonna look at what they, they believe to be a good DTI at about 36 to 40% tops in terms of how much mortgage or loan you can afford. Now, I like to use $100,000 as an even number, but I'm gonna bump it up really quickly just to show $120,000 in profit. So if you're a business owner making about $120,000 take home, that's 10K a month. Keep it extremely simple. What this really means is the bank would be willing to loan you up to about 36% of whatever your income, your gross income is. So I'm gonna put down, I'm gonna put a calculator here so you can calculate your DTI, but to keep this extremely simple, 36% of 10,000 is, you guessed it, 3,600 bucks. So now you back into this and you figure out, well, 
how much mortgage can I get for $3,600? And that's a pretty nice mortgage. I'm not gonna do it off the top of my head, but you can just back in and see, well, maybe that's a $500,000, $600,000 home. You get it? But if you have a car payment reporting on your personal credit, let's just say your car payment, because you you stunting for the gram, you, you ain't just have to go get the basic thing, you, you wanted to go get the AMG. So now your car payment, $1,100, $1,200, like I got it, okay, cool, you got it, but your income in this example is, is, is 10K a month. It don't matter how much money you make, it don't matter that you made 250, all the banks care about is how much profit did you show. You showed $120,000 in profit, period. So if you showed $120,000 in profit and you got a $1,200 car payment, what you just do? You just killed your DTI, right? So now you went from, in this example, being able to afford $3,600 worth of mortgage to $1,200 minus $3,600, which is $2,400. Get it? That don't make no sense. So it makes more sense if you are going to get that $1,200 car payment, I'm not saying not to, right? Because that $1,200 car payment for a third reason why you would want to buy a, a car in your company's name could help you from a tax perspective, right? And I'll wrap up with this if it's not already clear. Number one, get the house first. Get the real estate first. Then go get the car. But if you're going to get the car, get it in the company's name because they can't pull that and it's not going to show in your personal credit. It's going to show in your Dun & Bradstreet and your Experian credit. Then number three, the third reason why you want to buy a car in your business's name is for the tax benefits. Now, we're gonna keep this up, right? I'm gonna keep this up. Now, let's just say, hey, look, you wanna get financing, business financing. You wanna get a line of credit. Guess what they gonna to wanna to look at? They gonna look at your tax returns, right? Now, when you buy a car in your company's name as a particular um, vehicle, you in some scenarios can do depreciation. And Depend upon that business lending, that business lending. Now this has nothing to do with personal. This has to do with you trying to get a line of credit or it has to do with you trying to get like a business loan. In some scenarios, they'll allow you to add certain things back in your, in your, um, on, your tax, on your tax return. So to keep this extremely simple, let's just say you're at that $120,000 profit, right? But you go out, you purchase a vehicle in a company's name and that vehicle is 1200 bucks, let's just say it's 1200 bucks a month, 1200 times 12, I wanna say it's 14,400, I wanna say, again, I'm just going off the, the top of my head. So that means that's 14,400 in commitment that you're gonna to have to pay for that vehicle. Now, depending upon how you set it up, depending upon whether you're doing the bonus depreciation or section 162 of the IRS tax code, you can depreciate either the full amount or a certain percentage of that car payment or that, in, that entire car in that tax year, thus lowering your adjusted gross income. Now, when you lower your adjusted gross income, that technically reduces from a business perspective how much profit you show, but they got something called add backs. Now, this means that, hey, look, if I was gonna depreciate that expense, that banker can actually add back the depreciation so I lower my taxable income now, but I still can add back that depreciation when I wanna go get financing. Third reason why. So hope this vehicle, I mean, hope this video was helpful. I know I got into some really high level details. If you wanna get more specific with how you can start building credit as an entrepreneur, if you just need to start building credit as an entrepreneur, you're like, hey, look, you know, when I call Chase or Bank of America, they're like, nah, bro, we ain't got nothing for you because your credit messed up. If you're in that, if you're in that shoe, if you're in that boat, I'm not judging, I was there. Uh, click the link just below this video. I'm gonna walk you through step by step what 95% of people fail to do when it comes to fixing their credit. Or if you're at a place where you're like, hey, look, Kenny, my credit is great. Um, I just need to start positioning my credit file to start getting um, an opportunity to start building credit like what you said, feel free to reach out to us. My support team, we're here to uh, walk you through exactly how to do it as well. But hope this is helpful. Um, but again, the thing you want to leave with is never ever as a business owner buy a car in your name. Don't do it, don't make no sense because I just covered why. See you in the next video.